Hi, this is Kimberly. Today we will talk about Saturday, February 15, 2020. It was day 19 of searching for our little boy Blue, Gan and G-Man Stalk. Only one person knew where G was, and that square-shaped blockhead ignoramus was keeping her duck lips tightly zipped on this day. The Denver Post incorrectly reported Gannon as a nine-year-old. I didn't like that. I know people make mistakes, but God's sake, I'm not allowed. As a reminder from the last video, Al was willingly working with law enforcement as it pertained to communication with PISA. I wanted to include this part because it was mentioned for February 14th in the four different tall tale versions that Lyria told to her husband, the one that she could feel slipping away from her tight grasp. You remember, in those four versions, she had two different rapists in various ways that Gannon had been abducted. So, Prince Albert allowed law enforcement to monitor text messages, emails, and telephone calls. Please lend a friendly ear as I read aloud to you portions of Probabilities Arrest Affidavit. Line 158 reads, Investigators conducted several consensually monitored telephone calls with Mr. Stauk. Specifically, Mr. Stauk, at the direction of law enforcement, communicated with Letitia via telephone and email. These communications have been recorded and memorialized and consisted of hours of recorded conversation. I would love to hear these phone calls between them. I will not provide a transcription of these calls, man, but will summarize the importance of particular changes in Letitia's story and will also include exculpatory information related to Letitia's statements. Letitia never admitted to killing Gannon. Well, no, she would never, ever, ever. Line 159. For purposes of refreshing the court and Kimberly's people, here is a summary of some of piece of shit statements, whether to law enforcement, directly through the media, and or to Mr. Stelk in recorded email and voice communications. On January 27, 2020, piece of shit stated, Gannon left to play at a friend's house and did not come home at 1800 hours or 6 p.m. like he was supposed to. Excuse me if I may, but why the fuck would she report him as a runaway if he went to a friend's house and then did not come home at 6 o'clock as scheduled? And then she reported him at 7 o'clock as a runaway. Would she not have to, like maybe he said on his way out the door, I'm running away? What would lead her to believe that bullshit? You know, that, God damn it, why didn't they question her more that first night? But of course, it wasn't of significant importance because they showed up three hours later. What, are they friends of piece of shit or something? Well, any fucking way. On January 29th, 2020, piece of shit stated she was held at gunpoint, raped, and Gannon was abducted by her rapist. Within La Piece of Shit's falsehoods, there are details corroborated by physical evidence that would be near impossible to know without being intimately involved in the murder. La Piece of Shit has made statements to explain blood on the walls in Gannon's bedroom, blood on the rear bumper of the Tiguan, and blood in the garage of the Stalk residence. Details of the location of blood evidence has not been released to the media nor to La Pisa Shit and has been closely held throughout this investigation. Furthermore, La Pisa Shit has continued to provide alibis, get it, alibis, for her physical locations not previously disclosed to investigators. Her statements continue to evolve in a dramatic way and are all remarkably different from the original report to El Paso Sheriff's Office. Line 166. On February 15th, 2020, Lapisa provided additional conflicting stories to Mr. Stauk, including the story she told Prince Albert Stauk about Gannon. Falling off the bike was a lie because it was what she believed he wanted to hear. Okay, so that is ironically is referred to as backpedaling. Land sakes alive. What's the world come to? 
line 167, piece of shit stated the blood in the corner of Gannon's bedroom was a combination of hers and Gannon's. In this explanation, she stated that the abductor anally penetrated both her and Gannon with an object. She is one sick motherfucker. Additionally, she was tied up at some point in the abduction, and the abductor was still present during the El Paso Sheriff's Office visit that night. So she untied herself, and he was still there, but she was able to call 911, and are we sure this lying bitch isn't Casey Anthony or Jody Arias, or at least a good friend of those crazy-ass murdering bitches? Gannon's blood is located in Douglas County, Colorado on February 15th, 2020. So, we have talked and talked about all of the times piece of shit drove out to this location. In her Tukawan and also in her rental car. Or is it rental cars, plural? Because we don't even know when she went to retrieve G-Man Gannon in order to take him to Florida. Or did she have someone else do it? Well, I don't think we'll know until the trial. But in the meanwhile, we do have a shitload of comments and shit from several social media sites and the like. We aren't gossiping, it's research. I simply assess shit and then share my findings and my opinion about dumbasses like the piece of shit grouch and their dumb fuck choices. Line 171. On February 15th, 2020, searchers located a piece of particle board during their search of the area of Highway 105 and South Perry Park Road. The particle board had a stain that appeared to be consistent with blood and is pictured below and within the affidavit. The picture quality that we got of the reproduction of the redacted affidavit is poor quality. I have added a red circle to indicate the location of the blood stain. This is what the investigator said in the affidavit. It was a black and white picture and I have circled over that red so that you can see. The particle board was collected by the FBI evidence response team and transported to the Metro Crime Lab. Also on February 15, 2020, an initial test revealed a positive presumptive result for the presence of human or high primate blood. Further testing was conducted and DNA profile was developed and compared to Gannon's on February 16, 2020. That profile matched the DNA profile of Gannon Stout and is documented in a Metroclime laboratory report. Line 172 of the affidavit. The reasonable explanation for the discovery of this particle board with Gannon's blood on it is that Letitia used this particle board during the disposal of Gannon's remains. Line 173. The area in which the particle board was found is rural and the ground was covered by approximately 6 to 12 inches of snow. Additionally, as the area is rural in nature, it is likely populated by wildlife including predators such as bear, coyotes, and mountain lions. Gannon's remains have not been located and while investigators will continue to search the area, it is possible those remains have since been scattered since January 28th, 2020. Zero respect was shown to Gannon's remains. There's, there's just no way around it, no delicate way to put it. No surprise there since no respect was shown for Gannon's life. So. El Paso County Sheriff's Office tells Fox 31 over 100 people came out searching along private property in the South Perry Park Road area on this day for the third day of focusing their search efforts in this area. And the El Paso County Sheriff's Office said it had received 540 tips in the case as of this point. Search efforts included people on horseback and the use of dogs and drones. Fox 31 watched as teams brought back trained dogs to sniff out spots searchers had poked through with shovels and poles previously. Midway through the day, a deputy asked camera crews to station further down the road, away from the search efforts. That's when Fox 31 watched crews start to physically dig into the snow and narrow in on one area. 
The sheriff's office said, quote, information led them more than 40 miles from Miss Again and Stalk's home, south of Colorado Springs, to search in this latest South Douglas County location. Officials did not disclose what that information was. As of Saturday afternoon, February 15th, there had been no official update on what had come of the latest search efforts. The search for Gannon Stalk on private property north of Palmer Lake along Colorado 105 began Wednesday and, according to El Paso County Sheriff Spokeswoman Jacqueline Kirby, could continue through the weekend. Kirby did not say why the search was moved from Gannon's southeast Colorado Springs Lorson Ranch neighborhood to the wooded private ranch land about 45 miles to the north. Probably because one does not hide a body in the open of a residential suburban neighborhood. I would think they would go to a secluded, wooded area in a rural section of town. Well, you know, until they can retrieve the body to go to take it to Florida. Little else had been revealed in news releases. Several groups sprung up on Facebook that ranged from organizing volunteer searches to serving as a sounding board for speculation about what happened to Gannon. Lapisa Shit Grouch had given at least two interviews in which she claimed sheriff's investigators improperly questioned her. No, I would say they did not properly question you. She claimed sheriff's investigators improperly questioned her and her 17-year-old daughter and that she has been bullied and threatened online and in person. Sheriff's officials declined to comment on her allegations. Y'all, if you and or your family or someone you know is involved in a high-profile crime, stay off line. Don't talk. Don't engage. Probably shouldn't even look at anything. Just stay away. We can't bully you, threaten you if you're not there. On Friday, the day before, an FBI evidence response team vehicle was parked along Colorado 105 in the driveway leaving to the gate of a development called Sierra Pines, about a half mile north of the El Paso County line. Volunteers, some on horseback, and police dogs spread out over the 35-acre search area covered with snow. El Paso County Sheriff's Office, Douglas County Sheriff's Office, and search and rescue vehicles from both counties were parked at a staging area for the searchers along the road. Nick Gables lives next to the property where the El Paso County Sheriff's Office had set up a command post for all agencies involved in the search. He said they had not been to his property yet, but he offered to help once he realized why they were in the area. Quote, I did go over to extend anything I could possibly do, extended my four-wheeler if they could possibly use it to cover more ground or anything like that, said Gable, end quote. Gable says most people along the stretch of Perry Park Road know each other. He's not aware of Gannon's family has any connection to the area. Quote, it's a bizarre thing. It really just came out of the blue and all of a sudden, it's mind-blowing. There's hundreds of people here searching the road. I would say it came as a bit of a shock to people around here, end quote, said Gable. Jackie Kirby, a spokeswoman for the Sheriff's Office, confirmed Saturday night they will continue their search in Douglas County on Sunday. Drama Queen Pesha wasn't getting enough attention because everybody was focusing on Gannon. So the other drama queens in her life decided to throw her a big old pity party and formed a dumbass support group. Yeah, posting shit on Facebook when you are unhinged always helps to eliminate drama. Are they fucking serious right now? And now I'm going to refer to the video I posted the other day of Shanann Watts' baby registry and the response that I get sometimes, or the response I get whenever I post a Watts family murder video. 
for the love of God and Booker Me Dead, every single time I talk about Chris Asshat Watts, I have some men that come here to my channel with an attitudinal problem that needs some readjusting. I'm going to fix that shit up quick, fast, and in a hurry. Did y'all ever watch that movie Major Pain? That's where I got that from, the attitudinal problem. Bullshit. But these men that come here, not all of them, some, they have a flippin' attitudinal problem with me, with Shanann, and every species of the female gender. And then here comes the name-calling, taunts, verbal abuse, insults, and outrageous comments. And apparently, I and every female, past, present, and future, and now if I go back, I can check, I can pull up all of their comments, but why have you been watching and commenting on all of my videos produced for the last several months? Months, or since the beginning of my channel, really. If I offend, irritate, and or disgust you, why don't you go back to your lewd, salacious, obscene, imaginary, synthetic, rubber, blow-up girlfriend, since my voice makes your ears hurt, and I say the same thing over and over again ad nauseum, and in a monotone voice. Are you the jackass that hooked me up with an instructional video because I am plagued with a monotone voice? You'd say monotone like it's a bad thing or something. If you weren't such a thick-headed simpleton, you would understand what I'm doing here. It's way over your flat, bare, stark, vacant head. I refuse to change anything about myself or my channel. And now I know just how much it irks and provokes you. I love shit like that. Why would I want to change when it gives me such a sadistic pleasure to antagonize you? Thank you for bringing it to my attention. I'll do it more and more and more. I know your type. You get pissed when someone, most especially a female, gives you a reality check instead of telling you what you want to hear. I hope that one day you're trapped in an elevator and a playlist of my Chris Watts videos come up playing on a continuous loop at full volume. Hit the road, asshole. Get out of here. Bite me. Push off. Make yourself scarce. Go play in traffic. Get lost. Shove it. Beat a hasty retreat. Be on your way. Piss off. Fuck out of here with your childish bullshit. Don't you know how to just scroll on? No, you come back because you secretly like it. You like that I piss you off because you're, like I said, you're some kind of weird sadistic asshole. It's not my fault that women will have nothing to do with you because you have repressed anger at mommy. Fuck out of here with your childish bullshit. And now, Please stay tuned as I excitedly gossip, I mean read Reddit comments in an immature fashion, and give a bit of dull, prosaic, and serious commentary. After that's a news report from this day, February 15th. Bye, Felicia. Much love and peace. Thank you for listening. On February 15th, 2020, there were five topics added to Reddit regarding the Gannistout case. Number one was, I find it amazing, unbelievable that T.S. Number two, Bio Mom and Lena are in Texas. I had never heard that one. Number three, Treacherous Ravines. Number four, I need some insight on a few questions. And number five, more searcher FBI activity. They push back the media and have a privacy screen up. I'm going to be going over topic one. I find it amazing, unbelievable that T.S. Yeah, I find it amazing and unbelievable any of the shit she does. But for today's video, we'll just be going over topic one. There's a lot of this to cover, so I'll keep going as long as y'all like it. So someone said... I find it amazing slash unbelievable that T.S. seemingly killed and hid Gannon and got back home within four hours, and it's taking this long to recover his body. Investigators have either had the wrong tips or they've had no idea. I think if they're in the right spot now, I hope we find out why it took so long for them to get there. 
We have had so much snow since he went missing. It's been one storm after another, and more snow is coming. It's supposed to snow Monday through Wednesday this week. It's very uncommon for Colorado to have this much snow in February, and I'm betting, God forbid, that is played a huge part in finding Gannon. If this is now truly a recovery, and I pray every day that is not the case. Not to mention Colorado has many rocky cliffs and wooded areas and snow drifts can build easily anywhere, so anything is possible. I hope and pray he's alive and will be home soon. Hashtag find Gannon. Someone replied, hopefully the cold weather will preserve evidence if it comes down to that. Precisely what stepmom anticipated, I expect. I don't. Look at Chris Watts. He killed them and hid their bodies in hours. She may have had it planned out for a while. You don't know yet. Someone replied, I was thinking the same thing. Those poor girls would have never been found if he had not cracked and told. His truck had GPS on it. They already had an idea. If she heard him bad Sunday night, she had all night to lay in bed and think of what to do. She not very smart, despite her sassy explanations, the words she says matter. No parent with a missing child would accidentally use past tense. The distancing matters. She did something. I think he was hurt when they left, and she left her phone at PetSmart to travel undetected and get rid of him or pass him off to someone to do it. Nobody, no crime, has been plastered all over the news lately. She left her phone at PetSmart? Yes, and came back for it. I also read she's on CCTV there looking out the front window several times. So let's look at this really quick to see how rumors get started. The first two people are mentioning that piece of shit went to PetSmart when it was actually Petco. And then the first person says that she left her phone there when she actually left her phone at home, didn't she? Because supposedly when they got in the car, Gannon was told to text Harley and tell her that T left her phone at home. So a little here and a little there, and then someone else had something and someone else had something. That's how these wild ass rumors get started. After the person claiming to be a Petco employee made a Facebook post saying T was in the store twice that day, then deleted it, people came up with the idea she might have left her phone there. Not only do we not know for sure that she was in Petco at all, people do make up crazy stuff for attention, but the phone thing is pure speculation. I thought there was a receipt copy proving she was there. I'll check because if that is speculation and it's made up, it changes a ton. Yes, it does. I've been following this case closely since a couple of days after he disappeared, and I've never seen a receipt. I've never even heard anyone mention a receipt. Edited to add, I do think she went to Petco, but I take the report from the alleged employee with a huge grain of salt until we get confirmation. And I know for sure the phone thing is speculation. I think it was speculation as to why she came back a second time. As much as I hate to think or say it, what if he's in more than one spot? Uh, I don't think she had time to do the very worst, just the worst. And I am with OP. She seems mean and off enough to be capable of killing someone, even a kid. That video is so what the fuck that it clearly indicates she is comfortable being abusive. But she does not seem smart enough to pull this off so successfully. So either law enforcement is dropping the ball in some way, hmm, or she is innocent, doubtful. But then that would mean G did run away, and as bad as it was at home, I don't think he did. How far could she have gone between the Petco trips? I am now wondering how long this was in the works, if she did do it, because if it only began the night before, she really didn't have time to plan this very well. This must be Miss Lena, psychopathy trait. 
cold, deliberate planning. I think she planned his disappearance to coincide with Al's deployment out of state. I think medical call, candle incident, humiliating videotape, and subsequent confiscation of his switch, Petco visits, and hike were all part of her script also thinks she used Gannon's medications to overdose him. Also, she reported him as runaway, not missing. That videotape likely meant to bolster her runaway theory. Someone replied, enthusiastically, I might add, Yes, I agree. Considering there are 364 other days that he could have quote-unquote disappeared, isn't this just a tiny bit coincidental that this happened while his dad was away? This case brings me right back to poor little Kaylee Anthony. Poor kids. What the hell is wrong with people? I hope they find Gannon now. What the hell is wrong with people? Spent a couple of years in Child Protective Services social work. Still don't have an answer for you. Wish I did. Someone replied, I give you a lot of credit. That is a very challenging environment. And someone else said, and his phone, Google search. Could my parents find me? Yes, had forgotten those. Thank you for a reminder. She had quite the script. I agree. Number one, she is definitely evil enough to commit the unthinkable. Number two, she is definitely not smart enough to get away with it. And number three, she is preposterously narcissistic enough to ignorantly lead law enforcement right to herself. And someone replied with a number four. Law enforcement is giving her all the ropes she needs to hang herself. I don't think that's necessarily the case, that they either drop the ball or she's innocent, or even that she's been particularly successful in getting away with it. I've heard plenty of missing persons cases where the body isn't found for months or even years just due to the sheer size of the search area. There was a woman who went missing in my city a few months ago. The husband killed her and left a trail of evidence behind, but they still only found her because he eventually caved and told them exactly where he had left her. Was that Chris Watts by chance? Someone replied, that's been my thought. Assuming she is guilty, guilty. Then she had approximately four hours, two hours somewhere, two back. So the site they are searching would be an area she could get to and back in the time walking in somewhere and finding a place and doing the worst. In my heart, I feel this wasn't premeditated and how thorough and planned could it be? I think potentially she is laying down the abduction theory on Facebook as a defense when they find him. However, at almost 30 days, they should have verified her whereabouts on that day and confirmed everything with video proof. Oh my, woodworking tools? Plus, we have no idea what the actual timeline is. He could have been in the truck when she got home, and she could have left again. But you'd think more info on her movements like that would have been leaked by now, like a Kim Kardashian sex video. What with all the home surveillance in the neighborhood, it might explain why she was so eager to explain about there being blood in the garage and on the car. Yikes, as a woodworker, immediately visualized my knives, razor sharp with sturdy wood grips. I can't follow that train of thought. You can't follow that train of thought, yet you produce that train of thought, you sicko. And then, you know, you're making up a goddamn timeline because you don't know one and you throw it out there. And next thing you know, somebody's like, I heard there were razor sharp knives with sturdy wood grips. Based on the amount of arrogance this woman has publicly displayed during the investigation, I think she honestly believes they will never find him, and therefore never be able to convict her, with murder anyway. As much as it kills me to say it, I think there is probably a second person involved, and this poor kid is somewhere far, far away. That person was right on the money, unfortunately. Pretty sure her hikes were simply efforts to scout locations for Gannon's disappearance. 
As for second person being involved, that would explain her loitering at Petco, looking out windows. She might have been awaiting signal from an accomplice. These people let their imagination run wild. Well, I do too. What they do let their imagination run wild or something. I wonder if hiking was something they did regularly. That sinister reasoning behind it didn't even cross my mind. My reaction would normally be, quote, who would even think of that, much less go through with actually doing it, end quote, taking him to scout out a location for his own disappearance. However, I have not been able to relate to anything this woman does, so my only reaction to your thoughts on this was my jaw hitting the floor. At least it's not flapping like pieces of duck lips that just flap non-stop. Nothing fucking stops them. Hikes may have been part of her routine. In that case, she would see it as a perfect alibi. For instance, we always hike those canyons. We have pictures to prove it. Of course, you'll find traces of my hair or clothing. Gannon ran away. He must have tried to hide out in that canyon because he really liked that area last week. Edit. Her viewing hikes as alibi occurred to me while watching short video of them sitting on a rock above canyon. Daughter protected on the left, but Gannon was on her right. She turned, raised her arm behind Gannon, almost pushed him off a boulder. Gannon ducked and moved. Oh, great. And she recorded this as well? I thought the daughter was the bio mom's as well. Someone recorded it. Unsure of daughter or husband. We'll see if I can find Link. Edit. Someone found it on YouTube. Plunder has it, but only a segment. Not complete video that shows her arm coming behind him. Looks like she also caught sketchy body language. Fast forward to 436. The younger girl is the bio mom's as well. Stepmom has a 17-year-old daughter that lived with Al and her also. I would hope law enforcement has info from her cell phone regarding with whom she spoke that day. Might be reason search area was expanded. Hope so. I think he's injured and she's afraid he would leave the car. I mean, it kind of appears like she took away all of his communication devices. So maybe she was worried about him getting out of the car to ask for help. That's actually a good point. Possible. It's one of those questions that may never be answered. Or it may come out even when Gannon's disappearance comes to trial. I believe they're doing the best they can. They had a lot of tips, probably sent them on a wild goose chase. And that's all of the Reddit comments I'm going to have for now. I know these comments weren't as fun as some of the others we've had, but I do enjoy reading other people's thoughts and it makes me look at it in a different way. So. I will have a, another video coming out strictly devoted to comments. And please stay tuned for a news report from February 15th, 2020. Sheriff's office says more than a hundred people came out here to search today. This wooded private area behind us in the police car, a major focus for the second day in a row. In fact, a deputy came up to us just a little while ago asking us to move back here, saying they need the area very clear. Searchers cover rural Douglas County down South Perry Park Road for the third day in a row, bringing back trained dogs to sniff out spots that searchers had poked through with shovels and poles earlier. Midway through the day, deputies sent us back away from the search efforts. That's when we saw this through the trees. Teams starting to physically dig, narrowing in on this one area. The sheriff's office tells us information led them here more than 40 miles from missing Gannon Stouck's home south of Colorado Springs. The place where Gannon was reportedly last seen January 27. What that information is that led them here and what's to come of these efforts still unknown to the public at this time. The sheriff's office tells us detectives are unsure if they'll be out here searching again tomorrow. At